What's up everybody? Back in the shop for the first time in I don't even know how long. I think my last video was back in March or before March. I honestly don't even remember, but I've got some exciting stuff today. Uh, got a few new tools to show you and then I'm working on something pretty cool um, for our kitchen that I'd like to show everyone. The first and most awesome new tool that I have is this new miter saw. Uh, my other one, the motor burnt out on it. Uh, I used it forever. It was an older saw and, and the motor, the gears just totally went out in it. So finally was able to get a new one. It's really neat. And let me show you what all it can do. This is a 10 inch blade, but it is a sliding miter saw, which allows me to cut up to, I think 12 and a half inches, which is awesome because I have a lot of this bigger walnut stock down here that I've been wanting to get clean cuts on and just haven't had a saw that's big enough to do it. Um, so this thing is really, really cool. Speeds that up a lot. Um, it's got this really cool feature. If it'll show where the light will actually show where the blade will cut. I like that. Um, so I've really been enjoying this. Got some cool stuff I've already done with it. Um, got a huge mess in here. I'm gluing up a frame there and then I'm gluing up some little frames here. Uh, for my wife for some projects she's working on so a lot of different things happening but I want to show you the exciting thing I don't know if anyone remembers this piece but back in 20 the beginning of 2020 I mentioned this piece and wanted to make some cool stuff out of it here is the first piece that I'm going to be using and it has this nice live edge running through probably three quarters of the board and then it just goes straight here um, I've already cut it to length I just put it up here to show you but um I'm gonna take this and then probably cut this end off and rip one of the sides so it's flush. And then I will use another board in the middle to get the total width that I need for this top. And then I'll have kind of this partial live edge on one side and complete live edge on the outer side, which I think will look really cool, so. Okay, so I've got my piece cut roughly to length. I left a little bit extra because I need to establish a straight edge in order to put it on the miter saw, use the fence and get a straight cut on the end. So um, I'm gonna use my circular saw and attempt to use this piece of poplar, which I know is straight as a guide to get a straight edge on this board. I've chosen to use this side for the countertop because this live edge is so wide. Um, if I went with this side, I'd end up cutting off a lot more of the board, trimming this side straight. So I'm just gonna trim this side straight because I, it allows me to use more of this live edge for the finished top. So we'll see how this goes. All right, I've got an interesting setup here, but I think this will work. Um, I've just got this braced against that four by four, a big piece of granite down there holding it down and then the clamps resting on the countertop. <clears throat> Got my straight edge in place. I used a ruler, a straight ruler to mark a final line, but I think I should be fine there. I've adjusted my saw depth. So we're ready to start cutting. <laughs> Okay, I am done with that cut. Um, here's what I removed. And you may look at this and say, oh, you left a bunch right there. But if I would have drawn this line and just tried to freehand that, I would have gained, you know, that extra inch and a half or whatever. But there's no way I could, I could have kept that straight just trying to freehand it with that circular saw. So using the straight edge did leave a little extra material on the off cut piece but it gave me a really straight edge, which is pretty good for the most part. A little bit of an angle, but I'll clean that up with my hand plane. And now I can take this piece and use the fence now that it's flat and I can actually get this end 
to where it's not cut at an angle it'll be actually cut flush and will match up well with this piece and then the one other piece i'm going to join them together so in a smaller shop sometimes you got to kind of you know do what you can i don't have a table saw i don't have a joiner um i've just really started tuning in how to get a straight edge with my circular saw and then i come back behind with um my big plane and then straighten that edge out and just planning on uh, butt joining these boards or using dowels or something and a straight edge is an absolute must with that okay here is the top I've got it all joined together had a spider on my neck okay here is the top I got it all joined together and sanded it's looking really good I joined this together using pocket holes and pocket hole screws which you can see here uh, which worked out pretty well. Didn't come together quite as tight as I was hoping it would, but I uh, tightened it up on the top and sanded it. it looks really good. Uh, it's a very simple way to join a top and uh, structurally works pretty well for something like this that I'm going to secure to an island. And here is the top after lots and lots and lots of sanding. It's looking really good. This will be the front side of the island, the bar top here which looks really good. I uh, got that nice live edge and then uh, the other pieces here and then the back side. So looks really good. I like how this uh, these three pieces of wood have come together. Got a nice blend of the light with the dark and then again with the light. So looks really good. I'm really excited to finish this project. This is part one of this kitchen island build. Um, I am working on the actual island cabinetry itself. Hope you enjoyed part one. Keep an eye out for the second part and it should be coming out before too long.